it's uh, what, 601. Any agenda changes or additions? Okay. And uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting, which was February 6th. I'll make a motion to approve them. A second. Got a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. I am um, actually, there's just one, one additional. It's really, really minor. There's a they missing in number four. On the very bottom, the select board implied that. Where, are you yeah. yeah. the one that yeah. I'm person. sorry. It's okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Here we are. Okay. Cats out of the bag. We know now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing missing. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I just wanted to get a good start. <laughs> Minutes have been approved. Okay. Um, Sarah. There are one, two, three, four, five um, liquor license renewals, Price Chopper, Kinney Drugs, Jiffy Mart, CVS, and Soulmate Brewing Company. I'll make a motion to approve the five liquor license renewals as listed on the agenda. I'll second it. Got a mo um, motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Do you? Some of these names are names I've never heard of. So the Jiffy Mart, is that the one over the other end of town by the radio station? That was Max. Max that, yeah, Max. That's the one? Yep. Okay. And this Soulmate, is it right? Right down? across the street yeah. that has an opening up. Okay. Has a, has a sign coming soon. It's been there, what, for about yeah. a year? So it's still coming soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, you're good. I'm good. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it passes. And on to the tobacco license applications. There is um, just one for Jiffy Mart that's both tobacco and tobacco substitute endorsement. What does that mean again? Vaping products. Oh, okay. All right. Is there a. Um, restriction on where they can be how close they can be to certain businesses to be sold like child daycare or schools or anything not my knowledge okay all right i'll make a motion to approve the tobacco license for global motel group second a motion and a second um any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. Okay. motion passed Special event permit? No. None. Okay, like to um, have a motion to adjourn. A second. I'm oh, sorry, I'm make a motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> to adjourn, yes. Second. Got a motion and a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, coming out of that, liquor control, tobacco. Um, the select board meeting, call to order and any agenda changes or additions? Yes, please. If you would uh, delete numbers three and four, the summer recreation job description and summer camp staff manual from our discussion tonight. And if we could move number five, the engineer's construction plan of Walton Road Bridge down to the end. Okay. Uh, Tyler has a, our engineer has a conflict. He's at a DRB hearing in Stowe that started at five o'clock. He hopes to be here in time. Uh, he will let me know by text if he's gonna be late. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Three and four? Yes, please. You probably read those and have them memorized, right? I read them, yes. Um, like to motion to approve the minutes from February 6, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve it for the one that one word missing. I'm sorry? The word they is missing. Oh, 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 we'll get to that. Do I have a second? Second. A motion a second and uh, any discussion on the minutes Jess? oh um yes there's a day missing <laughs> 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 number four <laughs> second do you know what she's talking about judy again. she's talking about um yes i do now okay thank you very much judy thanks and I was wondering, under uh, number three, under new business, if we could just put in a little note that um, Tim shared his desire to serve on the planning commission. 
So he, he something along those lines, so people know that uh, we yeah. just didn't blanket approve. He, he did a mini presentation. And then the other one was um, under old business, at the end of the sentence about Ken Grimes has been consulted by the Roonies, but he wasn't going to be cutting the trees. Correct. So just for that to be noted. Yeah. Any other additions or corrections? All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Okay, the minutes have been approved. Moving on, new business. Presentation, Capstone Community Action, Yvonne Laurie. So when you come up to the microphone, would you introduce yourself, please? Thank you. I haven't used a mic in a while, so. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? I don't know if that's actually yes. making a difference, but. <laughs> I think it's you're, you're there, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm Yvonne Laurie. I am the Advancement Communications Manager at Capstone Community Action, and I'm based out of our Barry office, so I'm happy to be here tonight because I don't think I've been here since like 2019. Wow. <laughs> so it's great to see folks again in person. Um, so I wanted to share a little information about our organization, uh, but also just to get the support of Morristown uh, residents for our request of $900. Um, on town meeting day, or before town meeting day, depending on how people vote. Um, so, a little bit of history. Um, community action agencies started in 1964 in response to the war on poverty, so we've existed since 1965. Um, we are one of a thousand community action agencies nationwide. We are one of five in Vermont, and we serve um, residents from Lamoille County, Washington County, Orange County, and nine surrounding um, counties or towns and surrounding communities. Um, our core source of funding comes from our community services block grants, otherwise known as CSBG. So federal funds come through the state through our organization um, to offer services to people living in poverty, to offer them self-sufficiency. Um, so that's a lot of the basis of our programming. Um, our purpose, which I find actually more accessible than our mission statement, is that we improve the lives of Vermonters in need by providing opportunities, education, and vital assistance. By breaking down the barriers that prevent people from thriving, we offer the hope people need, the di dignity everyone deserves, and a better community for all. And so we accomplish our purpose through making ends meet, which is offering access to food, shelter, heating assistance, um, building stronger families through our Head Start programs and our child care food program. We also create warm and healthy homes through weatherization and energy efficiency programs. And we open doors through economic opportunity through our savings and credit programs, free tax preparation, micro business development, workforce development, and transportation programs. And there's a lot of information in the pamphlets that I've um, handed out. And um, I think the most important thing I wanna to convey tonight is that in our last fiscal year, uh, we served 10,950 individuals in our service area and that is 6,414 households in um, our service area as well. For Morristown specifically, we have served 448 individuals in uh, 300 households and providing all the services that we offer. Um, so I've provided our service report, which is what we call it, um, that I believe will be in your annual town report, but I just want to give a disclaimer that our final total actually went up a little bit because one of our programs had a, a change, a little fluke in their um, data, but that actually does not affect Morristown. It's just the overall service number that you'll see in your town report is a little bit lower. <laughs> so that's the main difference. Um, our annual report is not yet completed yet, but we hope to have it by next week. So we'll be putting that on our website and sharing it accordingly. Um, my intention is to also just share 
a brief summary of our work and some links to our videos. Um, I think in 2019, I shared a video of our participants and clients who um, kind of gave their perspective of the services that they received um, through Capstone. So I hope people will take advantage of that when they see that go out. Um, I also just want to mention a few other, well, more than a few other ways <laughs> that we provided uh, programs and services since the start of the pandemic that's unique to this community in Lamoil County. Um, so the Central um, Vermont Everyone Eats program, which provides nutritious meals to those impacted by the pandemic, stabilized income sources for Vermont restaurants, farmers, and food, produce, <laughs> food producers, which served 28,605 meals for this county alone. We also worked with community partners to provide freezers so the meals could be distributed safely and conveniently um, to those individuals. Um, our capstone staff participated in the Lamoille Area Health and Human Services Response Command Center. We also managed the Lamoille County Community Fund, so we allocated funding from our donors um, to specific individuals with in need, um, like a real crisis. We were also able to get funds to families who have children who did not have internet access at home. So they were able to use it through um, what's called a hotspot through a cell phone. And then we're able to do schooling from home for the remainder of that year. We worked with uh, the Working Communities Challenge Program. Um, we're working potentially in um, a workforce development opportunity, which already exists through a community kitchen academy. Uh, we've created a partnership with Lamoille Health Partners. Um, and we continue our work with the unhoused. Uh, for example, the vigils that we've been a part of every year in December. Uh, we continue to offer support to Morristown residents through our Fuel Your Neighbors campaign. It's a 100 day long campaign um, to raise funds for food and fuel for those who are in dire need, um, especially given the crises we're in. Um, our goal is to reach 300,000 by March 8th of this year. Um, and so we've already been able to distribute, I believe it's around $60,000 of donated funds um, to individuals in need this year. Um, our Community Services Appreciation Day breakfast will be happening on March 8th in our office uh, right up the road in Industrial Park. We're still offering free micro business and financial education classes. And if folks want to continue to learn more, um, they can follow us on social media, visit our website, uh, you know, join our e-newsletter. And um, we're just trying to do our best to use our, use our website to you know, keep people as up to date as possible where we're doing a presentation, where we're going to be you know, tabling an event or just having any kind of opportunity to inform the public. Um, so I know it's a lot of information, <laughs> but um, are there any questions, comments? Well, I know that I think Judy, don't we have, do we have a link on our website? Yeah. To, is it Capstone or is it to? I have to look specifically, but we have several links on our website yeah. to community services. I know Cap. Uh, I don't know if Capstone is under uh, United Way because they have a new. I think a new website or whatever to get people uh, like resource maybe uh, like to two one one maybe. I don't I know. I have Capstone Community Action. So okay. I have a direct link on the website. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah. yeah, I think there's a question. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Can you come up? Can you up to the microphone so the people at home can hear? Um, Bob Wolfrey, <coughs> Vivian Vivian Morisco. Um, thank you so much for all the community work that you do. My question is: Do you partner? with many of the other organizations that the town is being asked to support. Um, and is there any communication between all these organizations about who is being supported and is it across the board that they're supported by all these organizations or individually? I guess I just would like to understand how that works. <laughs> Uh, so we do work with a lot of um, community partners in the area. So there's a lot of coalitions. So housing associated partnerships exist. Uh, we even have one for our development office for just 
Lamoille County in general, just to see what people are doing to, you know, keep the community informed. Um, we've done things, for example, at the farmers market, <clears throat> where we've had a table of activity and just passed out information. Um, so I think whenever there's an opportunity, we are absolutely pairing with folks. So this was just like a very short list of what we've done during the pandemic, but that doesn't necessarily include a lot of other conversations that are happening, because obviously I know housing is a, a big topic um, in trying to, to help folks. Um, as far as the article goes, I think we're in individual articles. Do you yes. know that? Okay. Um, I know in some places they do group um, human service organizations, but really I think our, like my opportunity tonight was to advocate for us. Uh, we definitely support our community partners because the need is so great and it really does take a village um, to identify certain individuals who really are in crisis, um, who need support, and just to spread the word because sometimes it's just, you know, we might have a new employee who just doesn't know about another organization, so it really is um, a community effort to make sure folks are getting the services that they want. Um, and so we do encourage folks to support all of our community partners when possible. So um, I guess my understanding is that each of these organizations like the, the Food Share, the Habitat for Humanity, the Demoyo County Mental Health Community Connections, and all those things, are, they all work individually, so there's not a joint effort between all these organizations to pinpoint the various people that need help and, and help them as a group of organizations or is it just each organization helps them individually? And is there any cross communication between these organizations about who's being helped and how to, um, how to direct people in need to organizations that if they're not all grouped together, how's, how's, it, how's everybody keep track of what's going on, I guess? Good question. I mean, so I can only really speak to Capstone, um, but we have staff who are trained in their specific area. So for example, for housing, our housing staff are very involved with anybody associated with housing to help identify individuals or just families who are in need of housing um, but through all of our community like committees and coalitions um, and meetings that's really where folks i believe are trying to identify um, like a caseworker i guess is the best term to use um, but we also work a lot with uh, i know the mental health organizations who you know, they can maybe only do so much, whereas an individual may need shelter, and then that's when they'll come to our housing counselors and try to identify where some of the needs are. And a lot of times, from my experience at least, from what I've witnessed in my 10 years that I've worked with the organization is, we'll see, you know, somebody come in with one crisis, and even though we can identify that they might benefit from other services and programs, it's really up to that individual or family to take advantage of those opportunities. So we just try to meet people where they're at, because I think once they've been able to establish support for that crisis, then they're open to things like maybe weatherizing their home. You know, they might just at that time need heating assistance to get through the winter. But if we can say, we can help you sign up for Three Squares Vermont, we can help you access some food, and then try to slowly work with folks. So I think I see success as a very long-term process, um, not necessarily an immediate resolution. So for us, I think just to go back to the funding amount, you know, it's very minimal, I think, for Morristown in particular. We're definitely serving a good amount of individuals, um, but we try to do our best with asking you know, for public funds, from private sources of funding, so we can really help. And I think the relationships that we have with our community partners are very important because they will help us identify what's a need that we may not be able to address or that we're not addressing and how can we partner to do that. So we can really just support each other in that effort. Because I think everyone's kind of, you know, trying their best, but we're obviously stronger in numbers. And, and if you do have more questions, I mean, feel free to reach out. And I know I can definitely give you names of folks in our Morrisville office, too, who are really like the boots on the ground. You know, they really 
do know our commu the community members here. I have a better understanding how all these sure. organizations work now, and that's what I was looking for. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now, I think Yvonne, and I'm not an expert in this at all, but I think there's some there's coordination between the agencies. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I go to a WCC working a community connection and, yeah. and people are at the table and they're talking about the same issues and they do work together. Yeah. Uh, not all of like ha the human habitat for humanity is very different. It's not connected to the social agencies and not having all of the appropriations in front of me. I, right. <laughs> I, do. I don't know. <laughs> don't remember who's on them. Mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought this up because the appropriations have been separated out right. all of them they used to be voted on as a right. block and now it's separated out so i'm hoping that the organizations are aware that they are separated out i'm hoping the public is aware that the information about these organizations is in the town report mm -hmm. they all have reports in there exactly so they're easily accessible call them up ask them questions or read what they're all about but they provide services to our to the people in our community and mostly the people on the margins mostly people not sitting here mm -hmm. mostly people not there mm -hmm. they are people who are in need of services so i'm hoping people will be aware of that thank you mm -hmm. does anybody else have any questions i just have a comment i just sure. want to echo what what bob said um yeah thank you very much for all that you, you you're Thanks. doing and uh i had the opportunity last fall many people in the room will remember this of visiting capstone katrina gave me a, oh, a tour of the building and I yeah. was very impressed with all that you're doing. Great. And you're right, for $2 an individual, just doing the math pretty quick, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. asking the town for $900 is, yeah. is um, certainly a, a fair request. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Dis discussing canceling March 6th select board meeting due to elections. So this is a joint conversation I had with Sarah in that the elections on the 7th are going to have this room completely filled with voting booths. They're going to be all set up the night before. Um, and really not because it's the night before an election where we have two open vacancies being filled. I'm not looking to put large impact business items on that agenda because the board may or may not change. It's going to certainly change a little bit because we're losing Jess and somebody's going to fill that seat. So. Rather than hold a meeting just for the sake of holding a meeting, my suggestion would be that the board make a motion to uh, uh, cancel that meeting on the 6th and authorize the chair to sign the warrants so we can continue to pay bills on time. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Oh, do you can want to I speak? add to that? Sure. Um, and it's also because it's the school floor meeting at that same time, and I would encourage everyone to go to the school meeting. I'll make a motion to cancel the March 6th select board meeting and have a meeting on March 13th in its stead and to authorize the chair to sign the warrants. Got it. Second. I have a motion and a second. All, any discussion? Yeah, I have a little discussion. It, I made the motion, but it puts me in kind of an awkward spot. I can't be here on the 13th, unfortunately. I have a visit with a hospital. I'm getting to that point in my life, I guess, where these things happen. Um, and I'd just like to say that, uh, like I said, I'd like the minutes to reflect that I would like to stay on as the police liaison because I don't think I'm going to be there on the 13th. If the board decides otherwise, that's fine, but that's it. Thanks, Don. So all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Motion has passed. All right, moving on to number five. Oh, no, we're moving on to number six, sorry. Uh, Gordon Lane partial road name change to Lower Gordon Lane. So this, uh, I'm not sure if Todd's on. There he is. Yes, he is. Todd, would you like to take this one? Uh, sure, happy to help. So very briefly. Hang on just a moment. Uh, very loud. Thank you. Thank you. Drive safely. Yeah. 
Try right it again, Tom. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's coming through the computer, not the TV tonight. I don't know why. You have to use your outdoor voice. All right, okay. using my outdoor voice. Not me... outdoor enough. I'm not sure it's going to work, Tom. Okay, sorry. I'm going to nope. call in there. Just hang in there. I can hear you from here in the event that I uh, muff something up. You can correct me. How's that? All right. Sounds good. Fire away. So Gordon Lane right now, uh, uh, several months ago, the uh, request was made to, to name the lane that uh, accesses the um, current apartments and future apartments that are in progress now uh, from Jersey Heights. Uh, the entire road uh, connects. Uh, there's a one-way and entrance only, which is uh, right behind Mike Alexander's house. And then there is the uh, entrance and exit com combination up on Jersey Heights. They're trying to eliminate the confusion, uh, in particular for purposes of emergency services response. Having that road name be the same on both ends is problematic. So we've spoken with the developer. He has no issue. Uh, with us going forward to change the uh, access point, which is entrance only to lower Gordon Lane. And we're just looking for the board's approval to change that portion of the road to that name. How'd I do, Todd? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so my question is, is that a one way towards Jersey Heights or a one way away from Jersey Heights? It is one way into the apartment complex right so, behind Mike Alexander's. It's all entrance only. So it'll be an entrance only. And then, so they'll have to exit up above. That's correct. This is the new complex that's already under construction. Correct. Okay. Todd, the speakers are fixed. So if you have anything to add, they can hear you. Eric did a perfect job. No complaints. I make a motion we approve it. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Do you have a question? Oh, come with the microphone, please. Identify yourself, <laughs> even though we know who you are. Tony from uh, Cody Hill. I just want to know what this costs. There, there's no real cost. The signs no real cost. The signs haven't been printed, so we're just. This is a it's a formality before it becomes uh, fully inhabited up there. For the, uh, Todd, we're getting some feedback, I think, from you. Yeah. Okay, you got it. So there's no cost. Just change the signs. Just no, I'm not even changing this. I don't have the signs yet. So how about the engineer that did it all? That don't cost nothing. The engineer. I'm I don't not know. It's just a name. It's just a name change. We're just changing. We're just okay. changing the act, the name of the access road. So that if let's say there's a, a need for an ambulance up there, the apartments, yep. they would say access through Lower Gordon Lane versus Gordon Lane. Gordon Lane's going to be the Jersey Heights entrance. Yeah, the Lower Gordon Lane is gone. Yeah, well, they they changed my address, and now the ambulance can't find me, so I'm good. All right. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Moving on to appoint members to housing committee. We had a very good response to the uh, announcement about the housing committee. We had uh, seven members of our community that uh, submitted their names uh, through a, a form that Judy created for everybody. Uh, those names are on the agenda in front of you. And many of those folks are here tonight in the audience. I know there was discussion at the meeting where we talked about the housing committee being formed around the number five. Um, I would suggest perhaps you entertain appointing all seven in that people's schedules are very busy. They may not all be able to make every meeting, but uh, if there are seven folks on there, it's an odd number still uh, and still manageable that uh, you would appoint all of them rather than then uh, try and trim two very qualified people off that list. Will um, Todd be chairing this committee? Not chairing. Todd is going to be the staff support for it. Okay. So the chair would be chosen by the group. <laughs> They'll probably elect a spokesperson. Okay. That would be my guess. Right. Well, in order to generate discussion, I would make the motion to appoint Steve Foster, Laura Streets, Yvette Mason, 
Robert Bortry, Judy Bickford, Donna Sherlaw, and Josh Goldstein to the Housing Committee. I have a motion or a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Yeah, I would echo what Eric said. As I'm looking down here, we've got um, a former Planning Commission member, Steve Foster. We have a current council member, Josh. We have a current select board member. We have a form we have a former DRB member. We have a former select board member. And we have two members of the community, Bob and Donna. Sounds like a very round very well rounded committee to me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different experiences and yeah. qualities. Any other discussion? You weren't able to, um, do you want to borrow, you can look at this, I haven't shown if you want <clears throat> What are they supposed to be doing? It's a housing committee. Yeah, I know, what's their purpose? What are they going to be looking at? I think that's what we're going to decide when we get together, what our focus is going to be. I think we have a very general focus from the Planning Council. This was right? my, I'm looking at you because you're the Planning <laughs> Council, Steve. <laughs> Uh, Want to step, step up here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Your former sir. Uh, Steve Foster, former planning council member, and um, uh, I humbly request adoption to this uh, committee. Uh, when when this was brought before the select board, I think we laid out a very vague or very general um, idea of what the committee would do. I don't have the meeting minutes in front of me, um, and I'm paraphrasing and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's the idea of the committee to, to, to study housing in, in the community and make recommendations to the planning council on how to create additional opportunities. Is that okay. fair to say? Yeah. 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 I know that sounds very good. It sounds, sounds like the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could have an uh, Airbnb and development or an economy. Every type of housing. Whatever opportunities may exist. I'm confident we can address that. It looks like it. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion has passed. Thank you for Thank you. volunteering. Yep. Thank, you. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. I'm prepared for a much longer speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're. Forgive the interruption, so thank you so much. Um, discuss Rural Violent Crime Reduction Initiative Grant. The PD, along with Lamoille County Mental Health, is looking for permission from the select board to apply for this grant. It will be a town grant, but the position is funded by Lamoille County Mental Health. We've already uh, received about $37,000 for this position, this mental health specialist. We actually interviewed somebody last week, so we do have funding secured for six months. If we were to be able to get this grant, it would give us $150,000 over the next two years to continue funding it. So it will be a town grant, but the position will be, uh, there'll be an employee of Lamont County Mental Health. Jason, can you explain what the intent of the program is? Sure, this position will be a mental health specialist. They'll work out of the PD, the embedded mental health worker, essentially. And they'll work right out of the PD. They'll respond to calls involving any type of nexus to mental health substance abuse, suicide, uh, homelessness. There's a, a range of uh, calls that they'll be able to help us with. Right now we rely on the Wild County Mental Health and their crisis team, which is stretched thin. Mm -hmm. This will allow somebody to work right in our office with our officers and be able to follow up. They're only gonna, it's a 40 hour a week uh, position. So when they're not there, they could follow up with the officers on their, when they come off from days off about certain calls they handle. And then the embedded work will, be, will follow up with these, the people in crisis. Would there be any types of training or something like someone would be giving helpful hints on how to deal with someone who might be out of control or how to deal? Well, you know, de escalation, but on with the mental health issues. They're going to go through a lot of training, uh, just like any other crisis worker would through mental health. So, one of the first things that they'll do is spend, I think it's like six weeks of internal training with the Wild County Mental Health before they're actually able to come out and work by themselves. So, they'll do ride alongs with you or? They may, they may ride with us if they're not doing anything, but they'll be at the office. Um, 
you know, the hours are kind of up in the air right now. We haven't locked down a schedule. You know, the state police barracks and all throughout Vermont each have one person now. Uh, a lot of PDs, none of Lamoille County, but like St. Albans City PD has one. Uh, and then they, everybody is talking very highly of it. And it's something that I feel we need here. And it look, looks like we can get it fully grant funded too. So. I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. No, we are too. I was sitting at a round table with uh, Representative Ballant on Friday and, and someone from the mental health organization mentioned this, that they were in the process of, of hiring someone for this position. So this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that um, we, you were looking for support for this grant, right? Correct. Just that we that we're supporting it, or yeah, part of the grant authorizing is the support or the permission from the select board to apply for it. I'll make a motion that we um, provide the permission for the Rural Violent Crime Reduction Initiative grant. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, this so this person um, the intent is that they would respond to. Um, calls that were more mental health related um, so, and so that they would be specifically trained to respond to those and in and, and hopes also of referring them to the right agencies and to get the right help. And exactly, just like they'll work with yeah. like Capstone for example yeah. um, uh, with the homelessness. Yeah. But there'll be some calls that come into the PD that we may not be able to, we may be able to, to refer right to the mental health right, worker right. and they may be able to handle it entirely. Yeah. So, yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. Will, we, will, we, will we read this in the police blotter? You probably will, I'm assuming. <laughs> we'll have to ask Tommy, but oh. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion, questions? You want to come up to the microphone, please? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Travis Sabatasso with the Morris Den. Um, just two questions. I heard, I believe there's currently six months worth of funding and that this grant would provide an additional two years worth of funding. Um, so I do want to ask what happens if we're not able to secure additional grant funding beyond those two years. Um, I'd also ask beyond sort of the reactive work of this position, what sort of proactive work of this position do you in response to mental health? Sure. So right now we do have the six months of funding. Uh, we are working on several different grants. We as Morristown Police in the town of Morristown, but Lamoil County Mental Health has actually got their grant writer. We've actually applied for two other ones we didn't get funding for. So there's other sources of funding that we're applying for too in hopes of getting more grants. But right now, all we have is six months of funding. Um, was it reactive or proactive? What was your question? Um, it sounds like I have a grasp of what the reactive work would be in terms of response to calls and things of that nature. What sort of proactive work in this position do you mean? Sure, we're thinking of really concentrating around substance abuse. Uh, homelessness, uh, those are the two biggest arenas right now where we can see where we can put this individual out in the field, have them make contact with folks that are currently homeless in it and try to connect them with some services at Capstone or uh, DCF, economic services. Uh, and then same with substance abuse. We're still seeing, we're seeing straight fentanyl in town now and we're having a lot of people that are fighting that uh, addiction problem. So we're, we're hoping to use it in those two places. Just two examples. It's a new position. I think there'll be uh, that list will probably be 10 times longer six months six months from now but do you envision any funding for this position covering more than the general fund right now no but that could change thank you jason thank you thank you all those in favor aye aye, aye. motion has passed thank you jason number nine so we're we're not ready for, or, oh sorry, re review draft warning for special town meeting on April 18th, 2023. I think that's Sarah. So you can't approve or finalize. This is just um, your first view of it. That's okay. why we have to have that March 13th meeting because statutorily that's the time frame when you can actually sign the warning. Um, oh, okay. So um, the special, the, the PA auditorium is, secured for the date and the time um and there will be the article about uh, that we received the petition about adopting all budget articles by australian ballot um also there is a typo between the ballots say jersey way instead of jersey heights 
and the attorney has recommended that we place it um, on this special meeting warning, just in case there's confusion on the street name. Uh, those are the only two articles that I have right now to include on it, but I also, um, you have the authority if you choose to um, decide if you want to add a question um, about voting all officers on the floor by Australian ballot. Currently, we vote just select board members, but the rest of the officers we do on, flo on the floor. Um, you also have the option to add voting all public questions by Australian ballot that we do by the floor or changing the date of town meeting to any of the three days prior to town meeting. And then um, I've given you, given you some samples. If the article um, that we received the petition passes to move all budget items, that's all budget items. That That's anything that deals with money. So any um, other one sent on the grand list, all the social service agencies, any mm -hmm. um, borrowing for sidewalks or all of the money issues, if that article passes, we'll, we'll move to Australian ballot with the select board. So that will leave for town um, meeting the officers of every year we will vote on a town moderator, one lister, one trustee of public fund and the two library trustees. And then every three years we vote on a clerk and treasurer and there's only one public question, which is uh, the due date for taxes. So I just wanted, just bringing information to you. So with those officers, town moderator, lister, town clerk, would they continue to need to be elected on the floor or could they be elected as a ballot? Um, they would need to be on the floor unless the voters vote to move it to Australian ballot and they would do that, um, vote on that. Um, if you decide to add that right. as another article on this special meeting, or if it's added at a um, future okay. town meeting. So if in fact these two articles that you're suggesting here, if they do Not pass, suggesting, presenting. As you're presenting, <laughs> um, if they pass, there's really very little left to be done on the floor. The election of these officers that I just alluded to would be one of them. If we choose not to warn this. I mean, I know it means, in my mind, it, it means the end of town meeting if we did that. But if these two articles pass that you are presenting, um, there's really, I mean, it'd be hard to imagine we would even get 200 people to a town meeting. Yeah, and it'd be a, quite an expense, I don't know if it's expense, but a lot of work to set up the auditorium or the gymnasium for, to, to do these two samples you have at the bottom of the page, right? Yeah, I don't really, you guys had asked me that at the beginning of January at the time, I didn't really, I couldn't really think of any expenses. Um, it, in the past, the school has not charged us, but we are now being charged. I haven't seen a bill, but we're not being charged for using the facility, but we're being charged on um, the staff time. Right. Some, um, somebody's paying for, somebody has to set up the room and break yeah. down the room. But I don't, I don't know what that cost is. And you still have to have staff at the auditorium or the, in the, in the gymnasium to do the there. checklist. Do the yeah. checklist. You, there's still a lot of work up front that has to go into that process for I, to do those two questions, two or three questions, right? Yeah, um, it, the, yeah there's work regardless of yeah, it, but if, if it's Australian ballot or right, on the floor. Right. I guess I would suggest we elect our town officers by Australian ballot and put that on as a warrant, as a warned article. Is that what we'd have to do is put it on? So if you article? decide that you wanna add any of these three, um, model languages, then you would, um, yeah, just vote tonight to add it to this, um, the draft. And then when um, we vote on it, when we know, when you vote on it at March 13th, then 
it'll be on the, a revised draft. And, so, it, and it would be a town, it'd be an open meeting, so we'd be able to explain what's going, what the vote means. Like uh, they say, uh, public questions, they may under, not understand what a public question is. That could be explained at that time. Uh, on April 18th? Right. Yes, because it's a floor meeting. Every single um, article that will be there will be discussed, just it, it, just like right. a town meeting. Right. So I would suggest we we put town officers on the ballot. I would also suggest we put the public questions on the ballot. I do have a question about this third one, though, having to do with changing the date. It says on here, shall the town change the date of its annual meeting, annual town meeting, to the, insert either first, second, third, day preceding the first Tuesday in March. So right now our town meeting is on the first Tuesday in March. The way this reads, we would change the date of our annual town meeting to be the day before, two days before, or three days before Tuesday. that Tuesday. Why not just that Tuesday? Um, so some towns have gone the route of um, changing the date of town meeting in hopes of getting more participation, thinking a Tuesday morning didn't um, work. I've um, and then not added these questions. We have a petition to add the budget, which is that that's the bulk of our ballot um, anyway. So um, it's just another route to consider. I'm just trying to bring you all of the different options for you to decide upon. Um, from the feedback, I put it on our listserv with clerks and treasurers in the state to get feedback of what other towns have done. It, pretty much any town that has moved to a Saturday or a different night has said the town turnout has been worse or the same, just different people. And many of the towns have actually switched back to the Tuesday mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from having gone to try Saturday, they, they've they switched back to Tuesday because they didn't feel that there was a difference and um, it was less confusing mm -hmm. for voters. But I just wanted you to be aware that there's all of these that you could choose. I appreciate that. So just to be clear then, this is my last thing. <laughs> If we did put the article on about the officers and if we did put the article on about the public questions and if they were to pass and if those other two articles were to pass, this whole thing about changing the date of the town meeting is doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's moved. Okay, thank you. Jess, did you have a question? Um, I mean, so if we didn't put these other two options, the officers and the, um, the date that um, taxes are due, if we didn't put those on the ballot this time, would that mean that there is more of an opportunity to discuss them um, at this special meeting, or is everything kind of on the table at that special meeting in terms of what goes on the ballot and what um, gets discussed at a potential town meeting? So you can only discuss in, in the April special meeting any of the articles that are warned. So okay. if they're not warned, then there can't be discussion about okay. it at that meeting. Okay. So if, um, if it ever wanted to be brought up for discussion again in the future, you would need to put it on a floor meeting at a normal town meeting, mm -hmm. or um, you would have to have an, another special election, mm -hmm. or there could be a petition like there was for the budget. Okay. There's the three options. So basically, or or if never, if the community and you don't want it, it right. could never happen either. So basically, what we, it seems like, if we want to discuss all these things with the public at the same time, we would move all these, the remaining four articles onto the, the warning. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Sounds good. And sorry, just one more question. So this still reads Jersey Heights. Um, Jersey Heights is the right way. Oh, it is the right way. Oh, it said Jersey way. Okay, gotcha. thank you. Okay. So you need a motion tonight? Mm. In regards to all of this. I only need a motion if you want to add um, the question, the article about adopt um, the officers, if you want to 
add one uh, about the public questions and or if you want to add one about the changing the date. If you don't want to add any of those, I don't need a motion because mm -hmm. this is just a draft. Oh. Warning. Okay. And I'll need a motion in March to finalize it. Um, I, I would make the motion that we add an article that would read, shall the town of Morrisville elect its town officers by Australian ballot? pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680B to the um, warning for April 18th, 2023, and also an article that would read, shall the town of Morrisville, Morristown, vote on all public questions by Australian ballot pursuant to 17 VSA section 2680 part D. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? So do we want the thing about the May, uh, November 15th and May 14th put on there too? I think you just... No, that's just a sample of what what a public question is. Oh, okay. Okay. A public question is these artic articles also um, electing the officers. Um, but we I always vote them. on that, right? Mm -hmm. Every year. Mm -hmm. So is that gonna be on the ballot automatically? Nothing will be automatic um, on the ballot. The voters will have to approve one way or another. So there'll either be a question every year on the floor or on a ballot, depending on what the voters vote. So if, if this, these two, if all of this passes, then everything's on the ballot. Right. So there's- But I thought we had to put it there to discuss it. Yes. Right. And we just didn't. But uh, because you don't need to do the specific question, just the generic. The public questions includes any and all okay. public questions, which that's just an example of one. Yeah. Okay. Oh. We, have a, we have both, right? Motion and second? Yes. Okay. I think so. I think we're in second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. If this all goes into effect, essentially town meeting day is done. Correct. Correct. Would that be discussed in the April meeting as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Judy, I have a question on Zoom as well. It's uh, Kathy. Okay. Go ahead, Kathy. You have to unmute yourself, Kathy. Yeah, um, this is the question for Sarah, I guess. Sarah, if um, so, if I'm getting this right, Article Five is really null and void on the ballot, and uh, what votes you will be counting are the ones that come in on that special meeting. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Do you need this paper signed? No, it's okay. just a draft. Okay. And um, the names are highlighted in yellow because we don't know who the five members will be. All right. All right, so now we're ready for um, Tyler. And he's not ready for you. He's not ready. Uh, he's texted he has only completed two of the three items down there. He's going to be at least another hour in front of the DRB. Mm. Uh, so my suggestion would be that we table that uh, item until our next business meeting in okay. March. Okay. I don't. Uh, I understand engineering. I don't speak it fluently, so mm -hmm. I would do it a disservice to bring it to the public. Well, I would. I'd like to give Judy my. I, say, I hate to yeah. have these all copied again. Yeah. I put my name on it just so that they're because there's. I don't know. Maybe I'm being yeah. too frugal, but. Yeah. That's no, great. that's fine. We can. That's, good. that's fine. We okay. put it in the folder for the twenty. All right, because I have notes on that. All right. So we're ready to move on to old business. Any old business? There is no no old business. Approve the warrants. I have a motion. I all uh, make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. Got a mo uh, motion and a second. All those in favor? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Warrants have been approved. Town administrator's report. Let me start off by uh, with a retraction from last meeting. I made a mistake 
uh, my misinterpretation of a conversation I had over the uh, reappraisal that's finishing up. And I had said at the last meeting that that wouldn't uh, be applied to our property values until the following year. That is incorrect. So those values will be applied this year and will have an impact on the tax rate. So uh, I want to make that clear that uh, I, I gave bad information last meeting, but to retract that, I've talked to our assessor. She scribed me on that. And uh, so the, these new property values that are coming out will be uh, your property values for this coming year's tax assessment. So that's no <coughs> the first, the first installment, correct? Yeah. I'm sorry. Year That's correct. Yes, sir. Uh, second. Excuse me. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, just an update on the library. Uh, they were having a problem with um, a musty odor in the basement down there, and I had the Surf Pro come in and they did some sensing around the baseboards. And it appears that the, in the old section of the library up in the front, the condensation uh, is forming on the concrete wall behind the finished wall. And it's uh, dripping down to the bottom on, you know, different days, the morning and cooling. And uh, some moisture is, was uh, detected in the baseboards. So we have uh, ordered and put in place two dehumidifiers over at the library in the basement. Uh, the other upgrade uh, here in this building, we had a, uh, when things back up, they back up really well and our sewer backed up. So uh, all work stops, well, not really, but, um, and we just upgrade you on Monday this week on the holiday, um, County Plumbing and Heating came in and replaced inside the foundation wall. They removed all the old cast iron plumbing uh, that was a significant cause of the, uh, of the plug and have replaced it all with PVC. However, the line from the outside of the foundation to the manhole is still cast iron. And I only mention that because down the road, uh, if we bring the project back across the street uh, that we, we tabled for budget consideration, um, we will probably need to dig that up and get rid of that cast iron. It's just gonna continue to be problematic. There is a flat spot in it from when it was installed, whoever knows how long ago it was. And so it's, uh, we have some materials that are sitting in that pipe um, and that just with cast iron, it's not a smooth interior surface. So it snags things and it plugs up and it causes problems. So eventually that will need to be replaced. But for now, the internal of the building has been replaced with PVC, so. And the and cost when it's replaced from the build, that's, it's, a it's our expense, right? Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. Uh, and finishing with some good news, the uh, Halloween flood of 2019 has been fully competent or reimbursed for. So we finally got our last check uh, from the state. And to give you those numbers, the FEMA assessed total damages for that storm was $495,528.60. Uh, of that almost half a million dollars, the taxpayer's portion to be responsible for was $31,981.79. And the undesignated funds used to cover those fees have been uh, recaptured, so they're back uh, in the budget. Excellent. Finally, <laughs> this is the longest we've ever had to wait for FEMA reimbursement money. Mm -hmm. It was a very lengthy process. The finance department spent many hours on the phone hounding at both federal and state level. Our state partners were really good to work with. A lot of this was a federal hangup, changing your personnel, um, continuously asking for the same documentation we'd sent prior. Uh, but anyway, it's done. Money's back. That's all I have. Thank you, Eric. So, select board concerns. Um, can you do it during community concerns? After uh, community concerns, you can speak then. No, not right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, select board concerns. Don, you want to start with you? Sure. Um, two things. I'll be much shorter this week. Mm -hmm. uh, on February 14th last week, there was a planning commission meeting that I was unable to attend, but I did write a letter to the planning commission, and I think it was presented at that 
at that uh, council meeting. And um, one of the agenda items, maybe the only agenda item, obviously I wasn't there, was SDR short-term rentals. And back in the fall when we adopted the new bylaws or we considered adopting new bylaws, one of the new bylaws was to regulate short-term rentals in the town. And we did do that, both the village trustees and the select board voted in favor of that. At that time, I had suggested the so-called one plus one option, which would be that you could short-term your short-term rental, your property plus one other that you might own. It clearly garnered a lot of discussion, which is good. And uh, part of this, I'm not going to read this entire letter, but part of the letter reads that I wrote that I wrote to them is that I agree with the council and their concerns around making owners of STRs accountable to their neighbors. We've heard a lot about that in the last year. This was a major complaint from many residents in town and owners should be more accountable. I also agree there's a great need for housing stock in town and short-term rentals are reducing their availability. I don't think there's any doubt about that either. Finally, I am wary of anything that might create the need for an entity such as a rental registry. I think another layer of bureaucracy might not be needed. For these reasons, this one plus one option that I, Don, suggested, I, I can't speak for the board here, I can't speak for the village trustees, but I can certainly rescind, rescind that uh, suggestion. So I just wanted to throw that out there and make that public at this meeting as well. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to talk about was we had, a, I think, a, an excellent presentation from Capstone tonight. And as, as I was listening to Yvonne, I was thinking, and I just made a note here, um, you know, I've been on the board now for a year, and we have these special appropriations at town meeting, and there's probably 15, 18 of them. There's more than a dozen, probably less than two dozen. And my memory could be failing me, but I don't think we've heard from all of them in the last 12 months. And I'm just kind of wondering if maybe going forward, if organizations, human service organizations or agencies are going to ask for an appropriation for the town, that they at some point during the calendar year before the next town meeting come in and give us a 10 minute presentation. I think we'd, I for one would love to hear it. I think other select board members would like to hear it. I think members of the town would like to hear it as well. Um, I, I personally, I don't have anybody on my list that I necessarily don't want to appropriate money to, but I think it might be a nice thing going forward to let them know that they can choose their time to do it. We don't need to do them all the same night either. Um, and it might, might be something to think, think about in the future. That's well, it. That's all I got. We, we did do that before COVID. COVID kind of messed everything up. We had, uh, I think we had a um, rotating list of people who came in and presented. Um, we had that all set up and then... We used to have a rule that if you were asking for money at town meeting, that somebody should be there at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So if the people asked yep. questions, you could get out there and talk. Yeah. So this whole thing changes. Mm -hmm. It would probably be good to have them come in here and talk to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so a former select board after a town meeting, I don't know, maybe five years ago, it was pre-COVID, decided that they wanted five organizations to come a year and um, every organization had to come every five years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. COVID's mm -hmm. kind of messed that up. Kind of knocked it out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Jess? Um, I want to say thank you to everyone um, for supporting me in learning about how to be a select board member um, and being patient with me as I learned. Um, I feel that I've um, learned a lot about our town and um, about the, our community, um, about how our town works and about our community um, in the last couple of years. Um, I appreciate, um, like I said, I appreciate everyone's patience. And um, I also want to thank um, the community for, um, I've seen the community involvement um, really increase in my time here. Uh, I think that's so important and uh, I 
look forward to um, being a regular community member again and um, being in the audience and um, and then maybe someday when my daughter's grown up running for something again. <laughs> so um, I just want to say thank you. It's my last meeting and I've, I've had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan? Yes, I just want to thank all of our employees and all of the board members and the people who have helped us here. They do a great job, I think, and I don't know if they hear it enough. So thanks to all of our highway yeah. guys. And Please. Thanks, Brian. Um, when Eric was first interviewing for this job, uh, he wasn't my first pick, and uh, and I've told him that. <laughs> and I was interested in a town manager, um, but Eric has proven himself over and over and over again to be a perfect fit for our community, for the job he does here. I'm impressed with the work that he does. I'm impressed that this man has the patience he has. He's very articulate. He writes well. Um, he's knowledgeable. And if he doesn't know an answer to a question, he researches it and he finds out. Um, I have read things online and I've stopped reading Front Porch Forum because I find it to be very negative and very um, upsetting and um, it's appalling to see what people are writing about other people in this community who are putting their time and effort into making our lives better and keeping things running smoothly here. And I know it's not the majority of the people in this town. It's just a small handful. And I'm hoping that other people out there are aware that some things that are being printed especially in Front Porch Forum, aren't necessarily true. And they should be asking, calling Eric, asking us, talking to the people who work here, who do the work, what actually is going on and what's happening. So that's my little spiel for the evening. Thank you. Um, time for community concerns, and please introduce yourself when you come up to the microphone. Tony? <coughs> Yeah, Judy, I appreciate your speech right there. But this town cannot afford a $10 million budget. So whoever works here is way out of whack, okay? So I don't know who you're talking about, about wages or whatever it is, but there needs to be, this budget needs to be addressed. And that's what all the chatter is on Front Porch Forum or anywhere else. Because if this budget fails, the people need to be involved next time and then there would be no chatter thank you and just to remind the public that the budget discussion begins in november they are open to the public they have been videotaped and they are available so nothing's been done behind closed doors i've been coming here since april and i got nothing can't help you with that my road still just can't get a car over it okay april any other community concerns? You probably don't know Please about that, come, right, up. come on up. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, uh, no, uh, yeah, you're but, out of line. I, I guess I was, I'm not I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bob. Was, was there something said? Tony, you can't, d don't, don't, uh, talk to us, please. Not I'm to, sorry, I'm Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. Talk to us, please. No, I'm just upset. It's a select right. board meeting. It's not a time to go out. Okay, I'm sorry, board. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry, Bob. That's okay, uh, Bob Bortry again. I, I guess I'm trying to understand the reappraisal. Is that, I for one, have no idea what my reappraisal is. I don't know if anyone does at this point. So that's not being applied to the budget that we're gonna be voting on at town meeting day, or is it? It will be a part of the formula, yes. It will be, so how does that work when we don't know what that reappraisal is. I, I, I'm guessing based on information that I've been able to discern from different venues that my house in particular is going to be appraised at about 48% more than what it is right now. That's a big number. Um, and so I guess I'm just wondering, does it seem fair that that should be part of the process of voting on a budget 
when we don't really know where we stand, so to speak. It, it seems, it, it, it doesn't seem like the right move to make. And, and I think my, my gut feeling is all the stuff that we're seeing, the negativity is due to, in part to this feeling that people just have not been informed. And, and that is, that's a big information issue to have that understanding of what our reappraised value is. And so for me, that amounts to about $125,000 more than what it had been reappraised. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about it, uh, but I just wonder the validity of somehow introducing that into the budget when people just have no idea really what they're voting on. Uh, it doesn't seem like people are voting with an understanding of where they stand. And my final comment is that um, I would like to thank Jess for a, uh, a well-attended and a, a really uh, logic point of view to many of the things that have been discussed on the school board. You're a uh, you're a voice of, of a beacon in the in the in the dark. Thank you. We really appreciate all the work you've done. Thank you very much. Bob, before you go, I don't have an answer. I don't know if anybody here has an answer to your question, but I know that the appraisal our our homes are gonna be appraised at a higher rate. Right. But it doesn't mean that uh, the tax rate is going to increase too. There, there's a formula. I'm not, I, I'm not a lister, so I don't understand the I, whole process. I, I understand that, but yeah. I, I guess my, the point that I was trying to make is that none of us understand it. No. That it, it's a big question mark, and I know a lot of people, my neighbors, friends, are all concerned about that. So we, we really don't know what the heck we're voting on. Uh, we don't, you know. If, if we were taking what we are appraised at right now, everybody would know basically where we are. And I know that I know you're, you're right because I have done some research. So, but I, don't, I still don't know what that number is. And I think that uh, I don't know at this juncture that it's not going to be coming out before town meeting day. My sense is that that's not possible. And so I, I don't know where everything stands, but it, 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 it it bothers me that we have such a divide in our town. It's, it's not healthy and it's symptomatic of what's going on in our country. In, in terms of the timing of, um, and I know this isn't necessarily meant to be discussion time, but in terms of the timing of um, things like the grand list coming out and the um, and the reassessment that's something that's so that's it, it doesn't align with our our budget year but there's really nothing that we can is there anything that we can do about that and i think i've had that question since i started on the board like how do we vote on this if we don't know what the grand list is it's the same thing it's, it's i don't i don't have an answer it's the is it's up to the is it up to the state or is it up to i i don't under, i just don't understand why our our fiscally our fiscal right. year can't Sarah change. Can answer it. Maybe Sarah can yeah. answer a little bit. So the um, state statute is that the grand list has to be lodged on April first. So this is this I'm speaking lister term right now. So listers correct me if I'm wrong. But um, there's no control. That's the same deadline for the whole state of Vermont. All properties need to be assessed on that day. So. You, you are voting on a budget, not knowing what your grand list is, because that's what the um, deadline is for the state. And the reappraisal has been um, working, they've been working on it for three years, and mm -hmm. this is where we are in the time frame. Um, our CLA has dropped tremendously. Um, it's, it's very urgent that um, we have this okay. reappraisal done um, now. And we're really lucky, actually, that we are having it done now, as scary as it seems with this budget and this not knowing, because um, most towns in the states, CLAs have dropped, 
and everybody's scrambling to get their reappraisals done. And there's um, basically one company that will do them in the state of Vermont. And we are fortunate that we are undergoing it now because um, other towns don't know how they're gonna, they're gonna have one. Um, the theor in theory, it is that if your house is going up 48%, my house is going up 48%, everybody's house is 40, going up 48%, so the, tax, the taxes that shouldn't really affect too much, what will affect is um, if I put on a huge addition on my house, um, or I removed um, a garage or, or I removed something from my property. So those differences um, in improvements, um, major improvements or removals will affect if you're, in theory, that will affect um, how you're, you're taxed. Uh, but if, if you've made no, no major changes in theory, everybody will go up by the same. And could you kind of explain the, the CLA, the, the, the difference between what we are, where we are now and where we should be and how that's a positive impact for us? Sort of. <laughs> also <laughs> listed. Sort of uh, level of crazy. Um, yeah, so also listed territory, but um, the CLA is the common level of, of appraisal. So um, it's looking at um, what the town has your assessment at versus what um, say, what the sales assessment are. So you want it to be 100%. If it goes, oh, I forget what it is. If it's above, I can't remember the number that it's above, but it goes, if it drops, I think, below 80%, then the 85. state- 85. 85 and 115. 115, yeah. okay. The state forces you to have a reappraisal. Ours is 70 71. something. Two years ago, we were 92%. We're now at 71, 72%. Yeah, so, so we're, if we weren't already having a, a reappraisal, the state would be forcing us to have one. The other um, factor to look at is the COD, which is the coefficient of dispersion. Yeah. <laughs> and that looks. Say that again. The <laughs> coefficient. Co coefficient of disbursement. Coefficient yeah. of disbursement. And that looks at how yeah. my house is valued against your house, which is valued against the commercial um, property, which is um, uh, against a mobile home. It, it looks to see if um, houses are being uh, assessed equitable. And those, I can't remember our figures on those right now, but our 23.6. Yeah, our number is not good with that over. I feel, I know I'm gonna quote this wrong, but if it's above 14, it's not good and we're in 20 something. 23.6. But but the listers can explain this for real. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? I'm not sure I can make this all sound good, Bob. Can you? Thank you, um, my name's Dr. Cooley. Can you introdu introduce yourself too? Thank you, Ms. Cooley, for the kind time. I'm gonna to try to be the same way. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna try. Uh, I got folks. First of all, this appraisal thing, you knew this before the ballots went out. And well, talk you, to us, Tom. The, the appraisal mistake was made before the ballots went out. It was ways to let the people know that the appraisal would affect them this year. <coughs> you didn't do that. You, at the board, the director, nobody did that. Half the ballots have, have already been been cast. Another thing that bothers me, we have community concerns. You have select board concerns. This is the second <coughs> meeting where the select board concerns one person, one select board, talked about the budget. We got a 28% increase in our taxes and the select board concern, one person had a concern about this year's budget. And you, another, you're missing, you're missing letting us know what's going on. You don't tell us, go look on your website. We go through the website, 
We can't make heads or tails of that. We ask you for, for help. Where is the help? We come to these meetings, there's nothing. You want to talk, thank you for, for, for everybody that does the job every single damn day. This, this, this Article 5 debacle that you folks have done. There's a mistake made. Nobody's, everybody makes mistakes. But you don't let us know about it. There's a $200,000 issue, Article 5. You don't even say anything about it. You put one little tiny, for two weeks, this little act, this thing, is what you tell the, the people in Morrisville that a mistake had made and it's $200,000, don't worry about it. The ballot that you are looking at is in ballot, the Article 5. You didn't tell anybody that. You didn't even tell anybody tonight. This is transparency we're talking about. Transparency that you folks are missing. That's a Travis, did you have your hand up before? Uh, Just introduce yourself yeah. again, please. Travis Sabatasso. Sorry, I've got a lot of notes here. Um, I just wanted to address your comments first, Judy. Um, you're right, you did hold budget meetings. Um, as I've mentioned to, to Mr. Dodge here, there were no budget materials in any of those board packets. There were no narratives, there were no summaries, there were no layman's terms, explanations of that budget. There wasn't even the budget proposal we've now seen. I understand that was in draft form at that point, but it would be helpful for the public to be able to follow along with that budget process and be able to see the line by line before those meetings, not after. Um, I've asked for a budget narrative. Uh, Mr. Dodge at one point told me he was working on it. I haven't seen that. Um, I still, in all of my research, don't have a firm grasp of what exactly is driving this budget increase. Um, you know, I want to address Front Porch Forum as well. I've put a lot of stuff out in Front Porch Forum. I'm sure you've seen some of it. Don't know if your comments were specific to me or in general. Um, I feel like most of what I've put out has been accurate. I've tried to put out accurate information. Um, I've emailed most of what I've put on Front Porch Forum to all of you. I have not heard back or received feedback from one of you on anything I have sent out. Um, if it's inaccurate, please let me know so I can fix that. Um, you know, moving on to a couple other items here regarding the reappraisal. When are we gonna have that data? When are we gonna know our new appraised values? What's the appeal time frame for those appraisals? What does that all look like? Sarah said they'll come we'll out April, April 1st. 1st. Right. Yeah, so we will, are we going to receive something in the mail? Well, that's not that? our, that's not our purview on, as a select board. That's okay. the purview of the listers. So okay. I, I direct your questions to them calling so their office. The yeah. Okay. I believe there's a booklet that will be mailed or come. I don't know. Okay. And it will be appeal rights. Yes. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So at least what, a year or something? No, no, no. it'll all happen this spring. But the listers are the right ones to contact. So it's not a year. Okay. Do you, I, I understand the reappraisal process and that, you know, if my home value goes up 48%, my taxes are not going to go up 48%. I get that. Um, but if my home does go up disproportionately to the grand list as a whole, my taxes are going to also go up disproportionately. Um, so it would be really helpful to have their information in advance of a vote on the budget. I've already cast my vote on the budget. Uh, does the... Does the reappraisal, do those values need to take effect in FY24 or could we delay that to FY25? Lister question. I don't know. Okay. Um, a few other things. You know, I heard the board approved the check warrants. Are the check warrants in the public packet? No. Could the check warrants be in the public packet? I think it would be transparent to the public to see who we're issuing payments to. I believe it's a public record. Just a thought. 
Um, final comment, I suppose, just hearing Tony's comments earlier, uh, who's our E911 coordinator? Who's responsible for E911 reporting and uh, you know street name changes? Who does that for the town, you want to say? Abby Griggs. Okay, and that's a town employee? It is. Okay, what department? She's works down here in the, in the front office with the listers. Okay, okay. thank you, that's all. Why would we have no, someone? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Besides you, Brian, have you three, Brian is, is for voting for this budget. Have you three of the four? Before you don't need to speak for me, you don't know. You already said that you were. I said, I, I, said I support it. Don't tell yeah, how I'm right. voting because I may change my mind by the time I get there. Okay. So don't speak for Do me. Do you? All right. Okay. You say you support it. You three support this budget and would recommend the people vote for it. I believe we did take a vote on the budget. You you voted for the budget. But yeah, we did vote for the budget. I know you did. Uh, yeah. Would you ha recommend now that you see the budget and you see how high it has really become? Would you recommend? If I voted town? for the budget, I support the budget. Okay. Well, he said it's different. So you do support this budget? I, that's what I just said. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, the, the, the problem with the budget, in my view, is that um, the, the cost increases were um, unavoidable. Yeah. Um, a lot of them had to do with healthcare and cost of living expenses and fuel oil are heating um, expenses. Um, inflation is out of control. Um, we spent a lot of time looking at the budget line by line. Um, I, I mean, I don't make a lot of money. Like I don't live in a big house. Yep. You know, I, I certainly don't want my taxes to go up. Um, but I, it, the tough thing is that this town has run on almost a zero increase budget for many, many years, and um, all of these things um, came to a head this year. Um, I, we're seeing it everywhere. I think everyone's feeling pinched everywhere. Um, so I, I couldn't not vote for the budget and because I want the town to keep running. I mean, so, and I, I don't think it was, I don't think we, we did anything extravagant. Um, I, I think we looked at it very carefully um, and we leaned on our, the department heads um, in the town um, to recommend to us um, what they needed to run their departments um, and I I personally um, didn't feel um, that I need to that I after we had meetings with each of the department heads and we asked um, questions I didn't I didn't feel that I and and we still made cuts I didn't feel that it was right to um, to question any part of it. you know they asked for what they needed to run their departments I I certainly know if there's a snowstorm if I need an ambulance, um, I I want my town to be running, you know. So it's it. I didn't want to vote for this increased budget, but I, I support it because that's what we need to keep the town running. If the budget fails, nothing's going to stop. There's no service going to stop until July first. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to you folks because there's just uh, there's no way this budget's going to pass. I, yeah, I, and it comes back to you, and then you're going to have to make tough cuts, and then we're going to have to, the people will vote on it again. Sure. And if it's not low enough, you'll come back to you. see it. But no services are going to be stopped until if they don't, uh, until July 1st. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you, you follow the budget, John. I know you all voted for it, but well, would you recommend the people vote for this budget? I, I'm going to say a few things, Tom. Go on. So, because you are the individual in this room, yeah. besides us, that was at every meeting, and you, you had some comments at the end of the budget process, yeah. too, hey, yeah. that I'll repeat in just a second. Yeah. But we started at over 40% as a budget, which was ridiculous. Yeah. I was quoted in the paper saying it was huge. That was after we cut it down from 40%. We're at 28%. Yeah. As Jess just said, it's driven by inflation. It's driven by the staff increases. It's driven by a number of different things that have happened over the last year. 
it's a perfect storm of um, issues that is presenting that's been presented to the town of uh, Morristown. This is a budget that was presented by the people working in this town. It's presented by the department heads. Okay. You are here. You listen to us question each of these department heads. You listen to the narratives on those big ticket items. That information is out there, by the way. Um, so, you know, there were certain tickets. Bob went, certain items. Bob went through them item by item by item. We stopped and we did converse on the on the items that were increasing a lot. And we, we talked about that. And Tina presented this. And Jason presented this. And um, Kevin presented this. And the foreman were here from the highway department. Bill Mapes was here. The, the fire department was here. There was, so yeah, I, I, I do support it. Because now we're at a point where we're looking at a budget that was presented by our departments. I think it's safe to say that we as a select board, all five of us voted in favor of presenting this to the public. Right. We, I, I'll speak for myself, was very uncomfortable cutting positions. And you know, if the budget fails, that's probably what we're gonna need to do. Yeah. And that's not gonna be a happy scene. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna repeat, I said this, I alluded to this already, you were at all the meetings, Tom. Even you said, yeah, and it's on the video up there. Right. I said you came up to the microphone and said, even I, Tom Cloutier, yeah. agree that there's no obvious place to cut this budget. Mm -hmm. And those are almost the exact words. And and, and I, there was another. I'm I, not going to talk. No, go right ahead. Some, well, I'm just <laughs> going to say that there was at least one other person at the same meeting who said the same thing. Yeah. So it wasn't just us as a select board that did this. I think those of us that were involved in this agreed that this was a really tough budget cycle. So you can put me on the spot, but I, you know, I, frankly, I got to put you on the spot too, because we were all in this together. I looked to you and I looked to other people that were in the audience. We were all making this decision yes. together. And there weren't many of us, you're right. But um, do I support you know, simply saying, do I support the budget or not? It's not that simple. Yeah. I support the people that work for this town. I support the I support the department yeah. heads that presented their budget. We looked through it. We cut where we could, and we got to a point where I think, well, I felt it's time to take this to the to the townspeople and let the townspeople decide if they want it or not. If the townspeople decide to vote it down, so be it. You know, and and. You know, I, I'm not going to predict whether it's going to go up or down, but and at that point we will we'll rework the budget if necessary. If it does pass, great. There's there's a sign of boy. If it does, that's a, that's a sign of great support for this town and the people that are working for this town. I would say. I uh, yeah, but don't don't think also that if it's a fail, that it's it's not supporting the people. It's not supporting the people out there making or uh, doing their jobs, or the police, or anybody. It's just too much for us. And I agree that I was there, but and and I didn't see how we could do it. But I'm not educated enough to know, and I didn't even know the questions to ask. And I, and I said that that's one of my my on me I, to ask the questions. I didn't. And I don't think any one of you here on the board really have a background on finances to do it. I mean, I, you all did what you thought is right, for best for the town. I'm not saying that. You're not. You don't have the background to do this. He's, he doesn't have the background to do it. I don't want to. I don't. We're you don't have finance background. Fingers here. Well, I mean, the, not, I'm not pointing at all. Yes. Well, the point of having a finance director is that they're um, they're advising us. They're yeah. walking us through it. Okay. And we were also all invited to meet with Tina individually to get educated on the budget okay. the budget process. That'd be nice if you could put put this stuff out to us. Mm -hmm. Tom, I think it's worth saying you're you're right. I, I'm not a I'm not a finance expert. I'm the first one to admit that. Uh, I'm a biologist, you know, that's, that's my background. I've been a teacher for 44 years, that's my background. 
But I'll tell you, we have a terrific finance director here in town. Yeah, and uh, and it was just two weeks ago, I think, or four weeks ago, we had auditors come in here and particular in in and in particular um, mention her and her um, ability to, to run the finance department. We have a police chief. I'm not I, I'm not wait, a police I'm I'm not a police right. expert and my point will it will come yeah. up in a okay. second. Right. Yeah, I'm not a finance specialist. But I, I look to Jason to tell me what's going on with the police department. Right. I trust the people that work for this town. Oh, I can't do anything else. I cannot be a jack of all trades. Right. The, the same, a jack of all trades is a master of none. I can pretend to be one, right. but you know and I know that I can't do that. You can't do that. None of us can do that. But we can hire people in this town that are experts in their field and let them make some decisions just like the school districts here in town i think hired me to run my department i didn't have a school board that was micromanaging what i was doing in the room with kids i am not going to come in here and micromanage these people that are running their departments in town so i i, I just it needs to be said it's 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 nice to say that yeah we're not financial experts but we're not supposed to be either well it would be helpful I mean, it, it would it, really right, help. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying any of you is. You know, I, I'm doing something that, that that you think would hurt the town. You're doing what you think is best for the town. Absolutely. I'm saying the town can just not afford it. That's all there is to it. It cannot afford it. And Thanks. and whether it it gets to them or not, well, it, well they're going to find out. And things like like this coming out after the ballots are out. It just it doesn't help the cause any. Well, I, I'd like to say, um, you know, I, um, I I really do appreciate that you're here and that you are so concerned. Um, and, I, and it is important that we hear you. Um, and I also, I also want to speak to um, the idea that um, cheaper is actually um, cheaper in the long run. Yeah. Um, you know, like we've all had the experience of like buying the cheaper thing and then having to buy two. And I feel like the, the budget could be um, looked at in the same way. If we decide, you know, we're gonna cut, um, we're gonna cut salaries or we're gonna cut positions, then suddenly like maybe more sun isn't the best place to work. Maybe we lose some good people. And then the cost of retraining people, the cost of um, losing people and retraining them, that's a, that's a, that's a huge expense. And, and any business um, that um, does well um, and that has longevity um, understands that. And it's so sometimes it's better to pay it, to pay a little more to make sure your employees are happy, they have good health care. They have good benefits um, and that they have a good work environment. Um, in the long term, you're actually saving money. I and I, I like like I said, I don't make a lot of money. I um, I'm a teacher. I'm I'm literally living paycheck to paycheck, and I take side work. This does this job doesn't pay, you know, right? I am also taking I also take graphic design work. I I work my tail off, right? Yeah. So I'm not in favor of spending extra money. Like I don't want to put more. I don't want to be, write a bigger check to the town of Morristown in November and May. But I also want to be really careful about the idea that if we spend less money, that somehow that's going to make the town more affordable. Like what happens if we can't fix the Walton Road Bridge? What if you know so things start deteriorating and then it snowballs? I don't. It's just that's a slippery slope. It's not. The logic of it sounds good, but it's it's not sound. I like certain other people, and I know some people there. That if you go on Facebook forum, forum there are there are people there telling the truth mm -hmm. that have a two income family. Mm -hmm. That they see the estimate tax on their house before the appraisal. They don't know how they're going to afford that. Mm -hmm. They're thinking they're going to have to leave town. So you're going to have on the one side cheaper, I'm not saying cheap, but less expensive, I would say, 
on a budget and keep the people we got here rather than have the people leave and they worry about it. You got people right now with this budget are gonna to have to leave town. Mm -hmm. Gonna to have to sell their houses and leave. So Tom, thank you. We have other people that need to speak. All right, thank you. Yes, can I come in next after? I don't know if you see me on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Was she up? Uh, well, Jamie's been waiting Jamie to go on then, Kathy. Jamie then Kathy. Mm -hmm. Would you introduce well, yourself to yeah, please? Yeah, Jamie Brewster uh, here at Morristown. Um, I was hoping to be last, but it uh, looks like Carl here. <laughs> Kathy's going to speak first. Normally when I come before the board, I'm, uh, I, I can be pretty critical of, of the things that have gone in town and some of the decisions uh, that I've not agreed with. Um, and tonight we've um, had some pretty uh, contentious discussions uh, about the budget, other items. Um, but what I want to do is uh, <clears throat> point out two interactions that I've had uh, in the last couple of weeks that might, uh, at least for me, were more uplifting. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, call Jason uh, about an issue um, uh, with the patrol vehicles. Um, he took my call, you know, he was gracious with his time. He listened to me, he understood, and I went away feeling really good about that. Um, last week, two weeks ago, uh, after watching the video, uh, I had seen or heard, hey, the, the budget numbers are up on the website. Well, I'm a pretty crafty guy. I work in IT. It took me about 10 minutes to figure out where those budget figures were. I, I don't know. I didn't think to look under finance. Maybe I should have, but that's where I eventually found them. Um, so I called up Judy and I said, Hey, Judy, I got a hard time finding these. I wonder, you know, maybe it would be a great thing to put them on the, the front page of the website where other people might more easily find them. I'll bet you it wasn't 10 minutes later. There was a link on the front page of the website to help people find the budget numbers. So, you know, in this evening of maybe some contentious disagreements, there's a couple of positivity notes that we can take home with ourselves. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Kathy? Um, I'll second Jamie on the, the police um, station. Um, I called that because of the constant turnaround in my door yard, um, which is still not a good situation. Um, and I would love anybody to give me any feedback on how to stop that. Um, so he did respond. They returned my call. They followed up. They called the person and they did a good job. I, but I can't call the police station every time somebody turns around in my door yard, but they did do a good job. Um, second of all, um, when is the first installment? Is that a November installment? Is that our first installment of taxes? That's what we usually have done. Yes. Oh, okay. Just wanted to clarify that because I am beside myself and I will let you use me as an example. My house right now appraises for $200,000, a little under $200,000. Uh, Mr. Cheney sold the exact same house that I have just up water trough hill there for $410,000. So guess who they're going to comp me at $410,000. They are all about $6,500 in property taxes now, but if my, appraisal goes up to $400,000, it, it, it's looking like I'm going to have a $12,000 um, tax bill every year. And that I get paid twice a month. Yes, my husband gets paid. We all have certain bills. I get paid twice a month. I have to save $1,000 a month for property taxes. That leaves me $1,100 a month to pay any bills I have, groceries, try to pay my mortgage down because I'm 60 years old and I want to retire someday. So um, what do you tell a person like me? I don't sleep. I'm worked up uh, every single day. It's like, I can't do this. I, I, our house feasibly cannot save a thousand dollars in property taxes. So, and Jessica, you said you didn't know how to, to fix the budget or what you were going to do if it goes down. Well, let me just use one example here. I have it in front of me and I'm not, I don't want to um, 
begrudge anybody. This is just my suggestion. Um, the administrative assistant was hired at 425.22 and she's paid $50,190 at this point with all benefits. Um, the, her proposed pay is gonna be $63,336. That's a $13,000 raise in a year. Couldn't have that been half this year, maybe half next year? I mean, there's no way that I get a $250 raise a week because that's what that $13,000 figures out to a week. I mean, you could have slid into the pay raises a little bit, um, but I, I mean, I, I can barely function thinking I have to pay $12,000 in tax and I have to come up with half of that by November. So what do you tell a resident like me that's literally living this every single day that I have no clue about what my property is going to value for. It's a modular home, by the way. It's a Harvey manufactured home. So that's what his sold for. So I guarantee you they're going to caught me on his. So what do you tell a resident like me? What, how should I feel and what should I do? I don't have any answers for you, Kathy. I would suggest um, of calling the listers and finding out from them if they have a ballpark for you. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but it might help ease your um, concern. Did you want to say something? Sue? Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't have any, any thoughts. And I'm also thinking that um, uh, the Cheney House might have more property with it. I don't know. I'm only speculating. Um, just one second. I can tell you exactly. This is not supposed to be a dialogue. I just okay. got to remind you of that. This is supposed uh, to be clear sorry. concerns. I think I think we need to we need to end, Kathy. Um, just a minute, because everybody's had a lot longer than I've had up there. Like you can't just shut me off like that right now. Um, uh, we have zero point one eight, and Cheney's had uh, 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 zero point six. So we're not far off in property. Okay, thanks, so, Kathy. But, but that really just upsets me that you have no answers for everybody out there that's really stressing about this. Um, and that you that you agreed that to all these pay raises that just that one person gets a $13,000 pay raise in one year. You all you board agreed to that when a lot of us didn't even get a 3%. I got a 2% raise and she's getting broken down to $250 a week. I'm really just appalled at that. I can't believe that you don't have, can't come back with any answers to how the residents in this town feel. And you feel that your 50 employees are much more important than the 5,464 residents out there. But thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Kathy. Ed. Hope you, know what, you hope you know what my vote is for y'all when you come up. But. Ed, would you like to speak? <laughs> we can't hear you, Ed. All right, I hope that's better. Um, something I post in the front porch forum, I know how you come to dislike that. And I don't blame you, frankly. There's, there's even worse stuff in the back channel that I've decided to withdraw from. Um, the, the, uh, in almost any system of finance, a 20% increase year over year uh, certainly raises eyebrows and it's probably uh, not sustainable or doable. Uh, looking, I, I studied Travis Sabotazzo's uh, analysis of this and his interpretations of it. And I thought I had a pretty good understanding of it. And I'm looking at that and I'm saying, well, none of these, very few outside of the salary issue, which I take as a totally separate problem here. Um, it's hard to pinpoint anything as unjustifiable, but when you take the whole thing together uh, in conjunction with the reappraisal, See, that's part of the problem here is we have not one, but two 
events happening at the same time. Someone said something about the perfect storm that may in fact be an accurate um, uh, estimate of what's going on here. Um, all of this may be justifiable, but in the end, it's too much all at once and cannot be opposed, imposed on payers who are obligated at the risk ultimately of losing their property, ultimately obligated to pay this. There's nothing voluntary about this once it goes through. It's quite different than almost anything asked of, of, of citizens in what they pay or decide not to pay. It, your home is on the line to do that, which is a very large separate arg argument. So I may not argue with anything of all the many line items <laughs> of the budget, but ultimately I would have to say that regardless of their um, um, merit, in the end, you have to turn the budget down and go back to each department and say, we need this percent from you. Set targets and say, we appreciate your needs. We understand it's important for the town. There's been hyperinflation. Um, there are a bunch of other reasons that we have to add this money, but in fact, we don't have it because the taxpayers don't have it and they cannot be asked for it. That's really what we're up against. You're up against people screaming that it's starting to look like something they can't really manage. What will they have to cut is really the issue. It comes back on the taxpayer to make any of the cuts. I think the town will not cease to function. There may be things that don't happen as nicely as we may have hoped for. Uh, we may not have a patch of highway repaved. You know, nothing I love better than fresh asphalt to drive over. I always appreciate that. I, I'll do with that, without that, and so will many of us. I think the exercise of going back one line at a time and say, you can have 75% of this, you can have 75% of that, or whatever percentage is agreed that is, is manageable, you may have this please refigure your plans for this coming year, come back to us in a couple of weeks, I think is what the exercise should look like. Okay, thank uh, you. Thank you. Nancy, yeah. now we're gonna go to Nancy yeah. and we're gonna be ending this, right? Like everybody's had their, and no, everybody's had a chance to speak. Nancy's yeah. gonna be speaking. This can go on forever and we need to have an end to it. Go ahead, Nancy, please. 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 Yes, I would you want to. See that um, I would second what Ed says about going back line by line and looking to see where there can be cuts. Um, I think I heard in the uh, previous uh, select board meeting that insurance costs had gone up 30%. Well, that that's a big increase and that's probably a lot of it, but could we not do, could we have the increase in the healthcare and say, I'm sorry, but we can't do the quantity of uh, raises for the town employees. I'm sure they all work hard and do a good job, but there is only so much money that people on fixed incomes can um, do for taxes. And that's just too big of an increase in one year. And I would have to say my husband and I are voting no on the budget. Okay, Nancy, could you give us your last name, please? Donovan. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, no, we're gonna we're gonna end the community concerns. We've everybody has spoken at least twice, and I think that's and I should have set those ground rules up before and I didn't. And I apologize to all of you who are sitting here, and for that that I didn't. I have a motion. Motion go. I have actually four separate motions that need to be. What? Oh. Can I make an announcement first? Yes. Yeah. I just um, wanted to let everybody know that all the ballots were mailed out last week. Mm -hmm. I expect that they should arrive probably by today, tomorrow. If you don't receive them, please reach mm -hmm. out. If you received one for somebody not in your household anymore, please reach out. If they, I want to thank everybody that helped. It was all hands on deck. If, if you're missing something or you have something extra, please reach out. We make mistakes. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I have four separate motions and they're gonna to need to be voted on one at a time and seconded. I move to go into executive session because I find the premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA section 313A3 to include the town administrator, Eric Dodge, and HR director, Paula Beattie. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by, dis by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to go into executive session to discuss the pending and probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, <laughs> Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Town Administrator Eric Dodge. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's passed. Thank you, folks. Sarah.